why was it that you said that tennis was fun? What did you get to do at tennis this summer that was fun? Okay. And so, what did we hear? What was what was it that was fun? Was that she got to go out and spend time with her friends? That what did we hear? Didn't hear. I got to hit a lot of forehands, and I got to hit a lot of backhands, and I got to hit a lot of serves, and I got to you know beat people. Because honestly, that isn't the first reason that kids get out and have fun. And one of the things that we want to always be mindful of here, right from the beginning, right through the end of this journey, is why is it that kids leave youth sports, and why is it that some, I think, because I think that we lose sight as adults of what it was to be a less than what we are at some point and what it takes to go through that, and the vulnerabilities that there are, and how little wins, and when I say wins, I don't mean matches or tournaments, but being able to hit that kick serve that you couldn't hit before. That, you know, great job somewhere. That you worked on the kick serve, felt like it's better, you know? That's something that, that you improved on. So knowing that we've got to do that, we're not going to be at the end until that very moment when the journey is over and we send the kids off to college or you know, if some of them happen to be fortunate enough that, that all those things happen and bounce and you're in the right place at the right time and all these things kind of stars all align and it's all right and then you make it. And then it's a job. And then it's no, not necessarily fun, even though you're getting to play a game to earn a living, but it's your job. And so A becomes different. That this is supposed to be a journey that we enjoy along the way, the precious present. Learn to enjoy the moment that we're in. And I can tell you as adults, we fall out of that all the time. That we expect that somebody's going to make it to the next level, and when they don't, that we're going to impact it through sheer force of will because it's part of how we did it ourselves, and we drive that on them. And we don't understand the reason that we put sheer force of will into things is because somewhere along the line, we were able to make the choice as to what we wanted to do for a living. And so we found something that we must have had some passion for, because very few of us go into something that we totally hate and make it a lifelong career. And so we found that thing that we had passion for that was our choice, and we worked at it hard to reach where we are because we liked it. And we chose. Keeps the kids from having a mindset that enables them to grow. Because they don't want to fail. They believe that they're supposed to win all the time, that how they're judged is on whether they win or not, and not whether they learn or not. And that you know, probably one of the hardest things for us ever to learn to do was to learn how to walk. And none of us even think about, like, I bet if you try to think about how to walk, you couldn't do it right now. But there was a time that it took every ounce of concentration you had to figure out where to be, to let go of this table, and to wobble and to fall. Over and over and over again. And did any of us say, don't fall down anymore? No, obviously not, because we knew that that's what was going to happen. And so we allowed them to fail. And we encouraged them to keep trying. And so it was about the effort. If you think about it, teaching kids to walk, it, that's all that we ever do, is we encourage them to get up and to try again, get up, try again, get up, try again, get up, try again. And nobody counted how many times they fell down. We count how many times they tried. Did you see, she tried to walk three times today. And that's where we got our excitement. Yet, I will tell you from coaching kids that are very competitive, I very rarely hear a parent say, 
Did you see? He actually tried to come to the net four times today. I hear, why did he try to come to the net? He's losing all the time. He's so short and the ball goes over his head and he doesn't know how to do it. And so we discourage growth. Here we are going to anchor is we have to be about supporting them in their dreams. And it means giving them full, 100% total ownership of it. That if they want us to go out and toss some balls, we've got to go out and toss some balls. If they want to say, can you come toss me balls? Don't say anything today, please. Then go toss some balls. And don't say anything. Because all they wanted was the experience of, I'd like to be with my parents. I'd like for them to help me. But I want to figure it out. Let them figure it out. Let them figure it out. That's a lot of what this year is going to be about. It's going to be about empowering them to take back something that we usurped from them.